In today's video, how to accurately test your body fat. What's going on guys? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and we're back. Science with Steve. Steve's dieting. Look how lean he's getting. He's getting so lean he doesn't even like to wear sleeves anymore. Mm. So today's video is pretty fun because last week we went over to the University of South Florida where my man Steve Bogrand is getting his master's degree in exercise science. Mm -hmm. And we got some help from Danielle Aguilar. So big, big shout out to Danielle who was also my lab partner in my kinesiology class and I believe also in my ex-phys class. So Danielle's awesome. Um, we love her. And so we kind of mentioned that we were interested in getting our body fats tested while Katie Rutherford was here because Katie is so shredsy and Danielle dropped what she was doing um, and came to our rescue. So we got to go over to the exercise science lab there at University of South Florida. Yep. And you'll see some footage, I'll, I'll put it in here. So what I thought we would do is talk about it because there's a couple of different things we do here. We, uh, we use a machine and then we also do an ultrasound and I want to talk about some of the differences and right. why they, they're using this for research at U USF. Right. So first let's talk about the first machine that I'll put some clips in here that we're holding. So describe this machine and what it does. So essentially this one is an in-body scanner. So you might see this at some of the higher end gyms and it's a BIA or bioelectrical impedance. So essentially it takes kind of your anthropometrical, so essentially your weight. It takes your weight, it takes your height, it takes your age. And then what it does is it sends an electrical signal um, through your body. And then based on how that electrical signal travels through and is received, it's going to estimate your body water, your lean yep. body mass, your body fat percentage, because electricity travels better through water, obviously, uh, than it does through. It, it prints automatically. It says 5.7%. What? There's no way. <laughs> then so, tissue, yes. so Katie on this machine tested at 5.7% body fat. Now, we did not follow the guidelines. She was not fasted. It right. wasn't in the morning. We actually did it after we worked out, simply because that was the only time that it was going to be available for us to do it. Right. So we're not taking this. So yes, I'm going to call this video something like 5.7% body fat, just because that's still a pretty astonishing number. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get 5.7% <laughs> after I worked out. So. It obviously shows that Katie is very lean. She just won the Figure World Championships in November for the WNBF, and I think she's only up five or six pounds since then. She's really been um, reversing yeah. with, with intention, and, and she looks great in the gym. So we knew she was lean, so that was very cool to see. I tested at 14 point something body fat, um, and so why do we do the in-body, um, and then what does that tell us about the, the other body fat test that we did, which was an ultrasound? So the in-body at the college, they're using more for body water. So they're using it to assess ah. body water because of the fact that it's not as good as something like skin folds okay. or as like the ultrasound testing. Um, the BIAs have an inherent 7.5% error ratio. So, oh. um, so I could be as low as 7.5% body fat. Right. Or you could be as high as 7.5% over what it got you at. 21%. Right. right. Yeah. Um, so what they're using it for in terms of research is looking at total body water, which is okay. great for assessing something like changes in glycogen. Yeah, and also if you're, if you're doing skin folds, does the change in body water impact the skin folds? So would you use that in comparison with that? So it shouldn't affect the skin folds okay. as much because of the fact that, you know, intracellular to extracellular water is going to stay pretty The ratio steady. should stay the same. Right. Okay. Um, so with skin folds, we shouldn't see that same issue, um, but skin folds also is going to be you know, okay. based on how many sites you do as well. Okay, so let's talk about, now I'll put some, um, some video in here of what Danielle was actually doing. So Danielle did a two-step process. First, she went around to the seven sites and did several skin fold measurements, took that number, put it on the board. Then she went around to those same seven sites, put the cold jelly, it was very cold, thanks Danielle, couldn't have warmed that up for me, uh, put the cold jelly on and then did a thickness measurement right. with an ultrasound. What's cool about that is, like with the skin fold, there's a margin of error. You can like skin, get a little more, a little less. With an ultrasound, it's getting a measurement and it's getting a reading back and it actually gets the thickness of the body fat. So tell us why, why if we're doing the ultrasound, do we bother with the caliper? 
So the reason that we're doing the calipers is to make sure that we're getting the right measurements. Because okay. sometimes the ultrasound can come back with odd measurements. Um, so anybody who is skilled in doing skin fold testing is going to take this measurement, retake the measurement, yep. that should be within about half a centimeter. So if we have the skin fold measurements to assess against when we take the ultrasound, we know that if we got an ultrasound thickness of 10 centimeters, but our skin fold was at, you know, eight, yep. that something's off, right? So we take the skin fold because the ultrasound should be roughly half of what that skin fold is. Because you think if you're taking a, a skin fold measurement, that's going to be doubled on the skin. So the actual thickness of yep. that with the uh, subcutaneous fat should be about half of your skin fold measurement. Yeah, and they were all very accurate. <laughs> of course, Danielle is actually doing a research study right now on refeeds, yep. um, which will be really cool to hear about when it's done. And so she's very skilled with this device. She also helped Lauren yeah. Conlon with her research. So yes. I'm sure when you do hundreds of people, you just get very comfortable with the process. Yeah. So let's talk about, because um, most people are more familiar with things like a DEXA. Right. What would a DEXA compare to a skin fold? So I would say a DEXA... Or to a ultrasound. Yeah, so I would actually say that I would prefer a DEXA scan over okay. a skin fold or an ultrasound. Um, based simply on the fact that it gives you the differences between muscle, water, bone. Yeah, you can um, look at the specifics of each limb, right. and body mass, things like that. And DEXA kind of is the gold standard, especially when it comes to research. Um, yeah. Simply because of the fact that like hydrostatic underwater weighing yeah. is such a pain in the butt. It's very like, it takes a lot of room. Right. Um, you have to make I've sure. never actually even seen one of those. Yeah, um, and so that that's really your, your end all be all, but the DEXA is gonna be behind that and I would put the ultrasound right behind that. Okay, and then is University of South Florida planning to get a DEXA or is that just something that's difficult to do? Um, they're very, very expensive. Yeah. Um, so it, it requires the funding. <clears throat> I know the University of uh, yeah. Tampa has one, so I was just curious. I didn't know if there was... I'd be curious to take someone through the tests on all three, the in-body, the <clears throat> and do the test properly, the in-body, right. the ultrasound, and the DEXA, yeah. kind of see how they compare. Yeah. Um, so for the most part, it was just entertainment for us. Does it matter if Katie is 5.7% like she got on the in-body or 10.5% which she got on the uh, ultrasound? No, it doesn't matter because when you get on stage, no one cares what your body fat says it is. It only matters what you look like. And so mm -hmm. as coaches, when we're talking about body fat percentage, it's just a nice number to look at, get an right. idea. But what really matters is how you look on stage. Correct. No one's going to ask what your body fat is. They're going to say you're 3% or 10%. But those numbers are rather arbitrary because right. depending on how you test, what time of day you test, mm -hmm. what bro you're talking to, yep. that can change drastically. So diet until you're shredded. Don't diet until you have a certain body fat. But it will be cool. So when I got my ultrasound done, it said 12.5%. And I got last year when I was in, the, in there, I was 8%. So it'll be cool as I'm dieting for a show this year to see the measurements go down. Right. Um, I'm going to ask Danielle, please do me do my measurements again later. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure she'll help me out. Um, she's my homie. So yeah, that's it guys. Just thought I'd do a video on this topic. It was very interesting while Katie was here. Uh, obviously, probably one of the leanest females you will ever see uh, in the world. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine um, what her measurements would have been at contest weight. Yeah. Through, yeah. Probably, yeah. probably crazy. She was probably in the seven, eight percent body fat range. Yeah, which is absolutely insane for a female. F crazy for a female. So, yeah. um, but as we know, Katie's extraordinary when it comes to strength, you know, uh, physique, all those things. She's extraordinary. So you wouldn't expect anything less. And um, it was awesome to have her here. So yeah, Stephen, my man here is getting ready for a show. Um, coached by the wonderful and amazing Ryan Doris. And so when you get ready for some stage stuff, hopefully we get some body fat analysis of yeah, you. Absolutely. He's already got abs. Yeah. Um, so, and a little bit of glute striations going on. So, you know, in. you're sub 10%. So you Five, gr are you grumpy yet? 5.8. Um, I don't think I'm grumpy. I don't but think you're 5.8% body fat, um, I would argue. That was the in body? That was the ultrasound. The ultrasound. All right, maybe it's 5.8% by the way. Um, but uh, I don't think I'm grumpy. You'd have to ask everybody. <laughs> well, you're generally grumpy. <laughs> So you haven't, you haven't seemed grumpy to me yet, so we'll see. Yes. Um, all right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comments, or would like to see more information on body fat testing, let us know. And as always, go over to my man Steven's channel, Science with Steve, uh, linked below, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.